How will the new Airbnb regulations affect the real estate market? I get this question quite often, so let's break it down by the numbers. My name is Oleg, I'm a local real estate agent here in Vancouver, BC, and I help you make better real estate decisions. So let's begin with exactly what these new rules are. Essentially, you can only rent out your primary residence or a secondary suite within your primary residence. There are some exceptions for smaller communities, but for the Metro Vancouver market, there is pretty much no such thing as Airbnb business anymore. You cannot buy a unit and rent it out as an Airbnb unit, even if the building and the strata allow it, because the province of BC no longer allows that. The new rules will take effect on May 1st, 2024, so there is still a bit of a buffer period before the new rules bite. So how will this new rule affect all the people that are currently renting out their units as a business. According to the website insiderairbnb.com, there are about six and a half thousand units listed on Airbnb in Vancouver area. And if we cross check this number with the city of Vancouver website, they keep track of these things. And according to them, there are about five and a half thousand active Airbnb listings in Greater Vancouver as of November 2nd. So altogether, we can say there is somewhere around six and a half to five and a half thousand units listed on Airbnb right now. Now, there's actually a very interesting study that has been done by McGill University that looked at short term rentals across the province of BC. They found that there is a total of 28,510 listings in British Columbia. But what's more interesting is that they found that about 10% of hosts made about 50% of overall money to be made from short term rentals. And the report also pointed out that top 1% of hosts made about 20% of the overall rental revenue. Power hosts, if you will, will be affected the most. People or companies that have multiples and multiples of Airbnb units for rent will be affected by this rule change the most. They will have to either sell off their units or put their units on long-term rentals. And the idea behind this rule change is to provide more long-term rentals for BC. So of course, having almost 30,000 rental units come into the market for long term rental or about, let's say, six and a half to five and a half listings in Vancouver alone come to uh, the market for long term rental is a good thing. Now, of course, we have to keep in mind that some of these listings are primary units. So it's not going to be quite that 6000 unit mark It's probably going to be lower number than that. And of course, there is going to be some sell off. And I think if you're watching this video, this is what you're really curious about how the sell off of these units really going to impact the market of real estate and uh, are the condos really going to drop in price because of the sell off? Well, first of all, there aren't that many buildings in Vancouver, in downtown Vancouver that allow Airbnb listings that allow short term rentals. Most of the buildings have at least 30 day or 90 day rental uh, minimum, which means that a lot of the buildings are not going to be affected at all. Yes, there are a handful of buildings that allow short term rentals, and these are the buildings that are going to suffer the most. These buildings also have apartment prices that are sort of prompt up almost a little bit by the um, short term rentals, because of course, if you're in the business of short term rentals, there aren't that many buildings to choose from. So you're driven to the very few that are allowing it, which increases the overall prices. I've actually already seen multiple buildings in downtown Vancouver that allow short term rentals have higher than usual number of listings come to the market. Because of course, not every landlord that practices Airbnb as their primary uh, money making strategy is going to put back these units onto the long term rentals for some of them is just not feasible. Some of them have such high mortgage payments that having a monthly rental is not going to be enough to cover their expenses and they don't want to be underwater or other circumstances. So they're just going to try to sell off these units. Is that going to affect the prices? I think yes in certain buildings. It's not going to affect the prices across the board, but it will have a little bit of a ripple effect. Because if you can imagine you have building A and building B, let's say again, these are just made up fictitious numbers for the sake of this example. Let's say that building B allowed Airbnb rentals and they were priced at let's say $1,500 per square foot. 
Building A doesn't allow Airbnb rentals and they're priced at let's say $1,300 per square foot. Well now building B has to come down to about $1,300 per square foot. The problem for the owners in building B is that there will be quite a large surge of sellers trying to get rid of their units because they don't want to be underwater. They also don't want to pay the vacancy tax, uh, the empty home tax for Vancouver. So they're gonna try to sell off their units and to sell off their units, they have to go below $1,300 per square foot. If you have 20 units, they're all listed at $1,300 per square foot, while the one that is listed at, let's say 1250 is going to sell and so on and so on. So it sort of is a race to the bottom. Again, this is very simplistic, but it kind of gets the point across. So now let's say the building B sellers are racing to reduce their prices, and now they end up at 1150 per square foot. Then you have owners from building A who are still priced at $1,300 per square foot. All of a the sudden, their units are not selling because across the street, there are the same sort of units or similar units for 1150 per square foot. So now this building will have to reduce their prices to match the prices and so on and so forth. So it will have some sort of a ripple effect on the nearby buildings, but it's not as extreme as what I'm describing because of course, first of all, there aren't that many buildings that are Airbnb friendly. Secondly, it's hard to compare one building to the next because uh, things like uh, the age of the building play a role, amenities, and just the overall strata. So some buildings are just naturally more expensive than others. And of course, location plays a big role. Sometimes a couple of blocks south, a couple of blocks east make a big difference in price per square foot. But generally speaking, yes, if you are a buyer and you're looking for a one bedroom condo for yourself to live in or as a long term investment, looking at some of these former Airbnb units might be a good idea. You do have to keep a couple of things in mind. You have to keep in mind the maintenance and the overall health of the building. And of course, if you need help with looking for units like that and uh, buying a unit like that, feel free to give me a call or shoot me a text message. I'd be happy to help you. Also, I do have a real estate insider newsletter. If you're curious to subscribe to that, it's just a monthly email that you get with everything you need to know about the real estate market. The link to that will be in the description below. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.